You're watching Telecom TV Spotlight on 5G series. It's Friday the 4th of March and this is The Slice. Hello, I'm Guy Daniels, Director of Content for Telecom TV, and welcome to this extra helping of The Slice, our news and analysis programme at the end of MWC 22 in Barcelona. The event closed yesterday and the Telecom TV team was capturing interviews right up to the last minute. And so we still have more to share with you, starting with the cloud. And whilst this year's MWC might not have been dominated by the cloud as it was last year, its presence was pretty much felt everywhere. From private cloud to public cloud and from IT cloud to network cloud. And that's before we even start talking about enterprise services. But during the opening keynotes to the MWC conference program, Adam Selepsky, the recently appointed CEO of AWS, gave delegates a recap of the relationship so far between the public cloud providers and the telcos. For many telecom operators, it started with transforming their IT infrastructure and operations, all the back-end functions that handle the services, equipment, billing, finance, and contracts. Deutsche Telekom is a great example. In 2019, they set a goal to move nearly 60% of their applications to the cloud, with AWS as their preferred provider for IT transformation, so that they could develop more on-demand services. And they're seeing incredible benefits. Today, they can get most of their IT projects to market in just 2.5 months, where it used to take 18 months. Amazing transformation. Yes, amazing indeed. And Deutsche Telekom is a great example. But now we move from IT to hosting network functions and workloads. And this is an altogether bigger challenge. And now, if you say private or public, frankly speaking, it is about what the workloads really require. Okay. And if, we're, if I'm talking about the IT workload, we are happy cooperating with the hyperscaler, the public cloud provider. We are working significantly, actually. If you look at the data and uh, AI space, also they are very much advanced. When you come to the network space, there is as much a challenge for the public cloud as there is for us. However, we've been in this journey a bit longer in a private cloud offering. So we will be working with all of them trying to make sure that the public cloud solution, and by the way, public cloud does not necessarily mean it will be deployed in a public uh, uh, network. It can also be on-prem solution of a public cloud and that they need to be network ready for such a high IO intensive workloads. Abdul Mudassir was talking there with Telecom TV's editorial director, Ray Lemaitre, and we'll hear more from Abdul later in the program. Ray spoke with a number of CSP executives during MWC, and you can view all of these interviews right here on Telecom TV. Cloud is also an area of interest for the wholesale providers, such as UK-based Neos Networks. Cloud is, is absolutely where the mobile network operators need to go, but it's hugely complex for them to get there. Um, and um, so, so I'm looking at that, I'm looking at the, what can the cloud help them do? Network, network slicing as a network technology is not new, but it's still, um, it's still developing to be exactly what we need it to be. That in itself will help the business case for the mobile network operators where they need to densify their cell sites. Now, we mentioned back in our first show on Monday that Ericsson has been rather quiet this year. The mobile vendor shelved its regular Monday morning major press conference, perhaps understandable given the leak about alleged historical business practices, which is sure to dog the company for some time yet. However, CEO Boyer Ecom did make an appearance at Qualcomm's press conference and used the opportunity to stress the close relationship between the two partners promising it will continue well into the era of 5G advanced and beyond. I would say we are today only at the beginning of 5G. And we are here to reaffirm our commitment to drive the 5G ecosystem and innovate together. Well, we do more together. 
And I would say we, we lead the 5G evolution towards 6G. But we're also working together to shape and scope 5G advanced. And that's going to proliferate 5G into virtually every device and use case very shortly thereafter. And one thing is for sure, together Ericsson and Qualcomm, we will remain at the forefront investing in R&D and innovation ahead of time to deliver limitless connectivity. Well, the key word there was definitely together. How different it was back in the 1990s. The theme of partnerships and ecosystem collaboration was prevalent throughout MWC, as you would perhaps expect. But it's this idea of a broader and stronger ecosystem of vendors and developers that is now finally taking shape, thanks in part to the rise of disaggregation and the opportunity of private networks for enterprise. And it's in the area of private 5G networks that HPE and Intel see potential, but it requires collaboration and specialist domain knowledge. It really calls for an ecosystem to work together. It really calls for some pre-certification, certified and pre-integrated solution. And with a, a really a strong domain knowledge. So we, we recognize that we partner with HPE in doing some of the work, such as a, a lab that we, we, we Johnny do have together in Fort Collins in the US, that really start to say, how do we put a solution, a blueprint together, ready for scale? This is not a case where you can give up, well, here's an here's a equipment and then go at it. You can't just throw that across the wall. So very, very important for, for uh, HPE, Intel together and bring a holistic group of uh, ecosystem partners and do this blueprint. As Caroline was saying, you cannot just give them a, a box of tools and then assemble it yourself. It must be prepackaged. It must be optimized from a professional services perspective, from a software automation perspective, but also from a, a hardware footprint, energy usage, and these kind of things. And here we're, we're working together with, uh, with Intel on AI powered power, you know, power management in order to further reduce the cost of deployment. One of the very critical elements here of, that is going to determine the success of this technology is of course the kind of problems we will solve, but also the, the cost points at which we're able to solve these, uh, these technology. Uh. All of this reflects that the business of telcos is moving from being connectivity providers and towards enhanced connectivity and the provision of digital services. To achieve this, telcos need to continue with their transformation efforts. But it's not just technology. Transformation is also required in terms of culture, skills, and processes, as Deutsche Telekom's new group CTO explained. Our strategy has always been to be the uh, leading integrated uh, European operator, now the leading digital teleco, and that requires a transformation through disaggregation, automation, cloudification. Transformation, at the center of any transformation, are humans, people. Yeah. And that requires skill, that requires mindset, and we are working on both, and we are not there. And that's actually one of the most important challenges. We are lucky we have one of the top talented organizations with huge engineering, uh, capability, but we need to continue to invest on skill transformation and mindset transformation and also lean processes, which has grown as a brown uh, field operator over the years. So those are the challenges that we have to address, which I believe every operator, every brown operator, a brown field operator has to address as well. This transformation is indeed affecting all telcos as they look to establish themselves as DSPs, digital services providers. And we are very pleased to announce that Telecom TV's flagship event, the DSP Leaders World Forum, is returning this year in May. We invite you all to attend in person and join in with the discussions. The event has been really worth it for me. Put those PowerPoint slides down and actually talk about what we need to do to move ourselves into the DSP arena. It's like a, the Davos of, of telecom. The quality of discussion has been at a, a, a really impressive level uh, and I hope you do it next year and if you are, count me in.
So go ahead, check your calendars. May the 25th and 26th is going to be a terrific couple of days in a stunning venue. And we have some great guests to announce very soon. More information can be found on the Telecom TV website. I really do hope you can join us in person, face to face. Well, that's all for our daily MWC content. However, there's more. All the interviews, features and panel discussions from this week are available to watch on demand on the Telecom TV website. And next week, we are bringing you three more live programmes. Yes, it's the return of the ever popular after show. And I'll be joined by my colleague Ray Lemaitre, freshly recovered from his exertions in Barcelona, along with an array of industry guests ready to take your questions about 5G. Any questions you have, either based on our video content or about 5G in general, send them in. And we'll also look back at the key developments of MWC and the implications for the industry. There's a Q&A form on the website for you to use. Plus, we have our regular viewer poll. And the question we are asking you all to vote on is, which of the following will have the most positive impact on 5G service capabilities and ROI potential for operators? As always, we give you five choices. Will it be 5G core, millimeter wave or cloud native, or perhaps AI or open RAN? The choice is yours. Cast your vote and we'll monitor the real-time voting live on our after show programs. The first one is on Tuesday at 4 p.m. UK time. And we have additional shows at the same time on Wednesday and Thursday. So that's it. Another MWC comes to an end. The organizers of the event, the GSMA, claim around 60,000 attendees in person, which pretty much chimes with what Telecom TV witnessed. And despite the rather crowded looking image there, our team at the show were happy to report that moving around was a lot easier and far more pleasant than back in 2019. A final reminder then to send us your questions for the after show. The first one is live on Tuesday next week and do take part in our viewer poll. So from the whole Telecom TV team, those of us in the UK and those currently making the journey back home from Barcelona, thank you very much for watching and until next week, goodbye.